The definition of a martingale is pretty simple. I mean, I have it right here. You're probably here because you have no idea what this statement means. In particular, what in the world is this S doing here? Why is the right hand side a random variable? And most importantly, why do we care? Let's start off with an example that you probably saw in some probability class. You have a red and blue box, they each have some distribution of white and black balls, and the question is if you choose a random ball from the red box, what is the probability the ball is white? This problem is pretty simple. We just divide the number of white balls by the total number of balls. We will change the expression on the left to say that it is conditioned on the fact that we're choosing from the red box. Hence, if we change the question to choosing from the blue box, we just change the condition. Now let's change the question just a little bit. Rather than asking the probability of drawing a white ball, what if we just keep drawing the number of balls with replacement? Most of you can probably recognize that this is just a geometric distribution, so we just divide 1 by the probability of getting a white ball. Again, we add the condition that we're drawing from the blue box, so if we change the problem to drawing from the red box, we just need to change the condition again. Notice that both of these are conditional expectations. We're conditioning on the color to determine the number of draws we need. Now let's rephrase the question just a little bit. What is the expected number of draws if we ever know the color of the box? Now the answer is still pretty similar. It'll be 1.5 if it's red, 4 if it's blue. This should look quite similar to something else we know, random variables, where it's defined to map events to numbers. Hopefully you can start to see a connection between random variables and conditional expectation. Let's go over another example. We have a random block where we start at zero and we go up and down with half probability. Now the question we want to ask is that if we're currently on two, what is the expected value of the next point we land on? Hopefully you can see that this calculation is quite simple. I have it right here. Let's rewrite this as a conditional expectation. This expression should make sense. It's basically saying the expected value at time t plus 1, given that at time t we're at 2, is still 2. Let's change the expression just a little bit. Rather than conditioning on xt equal to 2, what if we just condition on xt? This basically means that if we're currently at xt, what is the expected value we land on? And we know the answer to that. Since we're moving up and down with equal probability, we expect to land on the same value. Now we are really close to the definition of a martingale. Rather than conditioning on the value of xt, we will condition on all of the information we know until time t. And finally, for notation's sake, we will move the t in front of the expected value, which gives us our definition of a martingale. So what is the easy way of interpreting this expression? Basically, at time t, the expected value of the next step is on average what we're starting at right now. Now using some sort of recursion, we can say not just for one step, but for all s less than t, and that is the definition of a martingale. Now, how do we prove that something is a martingale? Here we have yt, which is a combination of a random walk and t. I will take the conditional expectation of yt plus 1 at time t, and we do some calculations. At step 4, where we take the conditional expectation of xt plus 1 at time t, we just use the definition of expected value, where we have xt within our calculations. Pause the video if you have to, but at the end, we prove that yt has the property of a martingale. One neat trick that we can use is the tower rule, which tells us that after we take the expected value of both sides, the conditional expectation side just disappears. And using some recursion, that tells us that the expected value at any time t of y is just a starting value. So why are martingales so useful then? Well, if we have some sort of process and we can separate it into some martingale process and some non-martingale process and then take the expected value, calculations are quite simple. Of course, martingales have like other really useful properties like the optional stopping theorem, but maybe in another video we'll cover that. For now, we just want to cover the basics. The main takeaways of this video is hopefully that you understand why conditional expectation can be a random variable, a martingale is basically a fair game, and the martingales have a lot of useful applications. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.